Do you think that there's, there, there's a great defense to this? And by the way, even if they were to strip him of his title and describe him as, you know, chief creative officer or something else, would it matter? Uh, I don't think there's a great defense to it. I think he'll try to come up with a couple of lines of argument, one that it wasn't material, and two, it was basically in line with what Tesla had announced publicly. And I agree with you, Andrew. There's uh, probably not going to be a uh, number two at Tesla for a very long time, even if title is gone for strip from Elon Musk. So we'll have to see what they argue. We'll have to see what they determine. But I do think it's going to be very hard to ever be a number two at Tesla with Elon Musk there. So how would you, though, measure the relevance of what's happening here, which is to say that uh, he, of course, will defend himself. I imagine he has to. Um, if you're the judge, how do you think about it? Well, I think you look at it in the framework of what they prescribed, uh, given the history with Elon Musk and what happened the last time. But you also have to look at a larger issue, which is what is the message for the overall community? What is the uh, SEC's uh, function? Do they get to have an authority over not just Elon Musk, but the entire industry? And people do, do people have to pay attention to that? And I think the answer to both those questions is yes. So it's not just about Tesla. It's not just about Elon Musk. But it's about authority and following the rules. Right. And as we know lately, that has not always been prescribed. We've seen that in the political arena where somebody said, don't go on Twitter, and somebody went on Twitter. So this is, seems to be thematic across not just business, but across politics as well. Mark, here's a curveball for you. A lot of people talking about whether he'll get stripped of his title. But there's also talk of fines, potentially big fines. He paid $20 million last time. What would happen if a judge said, look, we're actually going to fine you $100 million. Does he have $100 million in the bank, and would that put any pressure on the stock? Uh, I, I mean, I think Elon Musk will not have a hard time raising $100 million, but that's a lot of money. And even though this is a huge company with a, you know, tens of billions of market cap, uh, that's a big statement here. And I don't expect that. But if that happened, I think people would wake up, and I think the community would wake up. Um, again, I'm not sure, Andrew, if that's going to be the fine. But listen, the last time it was $20 million and he violated that. A lot of right. people think that there's another slap on the wrist like that is not going to be enough. So we'll just have to see. I don't see $100 million, but I do see something quite significant. Uh, Mark, the stock now trading at $287. Where, where do you think it should be? And what was your reaction when he announced plans to effectively uh, end uh, uh, the, the showrooms around the country? Um, and instead effectively have this program where you buy, you buy online and you decide you're buying it and you get, a, you get to test it. Uh, if, if you don't like it, you can return it, but it's not really a test. It, it, it jarred people. I think there are some communities and there's some places where people have no problem buying it online and some of those people were not going to be affected. I think to completely shut down the network like you described was jarring. And I think um, he's obviously retracted that. Everybody got an email this morning talking about changes to that program that was not even a month old. I think the more worrisome thing, Andrew, is I was uh, looking on the website last night trying to check for a new car. And you look at for the more expensive Model 3s, it says two weeks delivery time. Two weeks. You can't walk into most showrooms and pick up a car of your liking with the kind of accessories that you'd like for two weeks. You walk into a Mercedes dealer, you walk into a BMW dealer, et cetera. You can't do that. You go online today and order a car with your color and your prescri prescribe what you want. It says less than two weeks. That to me is the bigger worry right so now. You, you How think quickly did that that's degrade? A worry is that, that's a demand problem? Or you, I mean, I'm sure the, the Tesla bulls will tell you they've somehow figured out the supply chain. I think that's a demand problem right now. I think that's an issue going into the end of the quarter that you see that it is no problem getting any color you want for the expensive Model 3 at, at less than two weeks. I think that's an issue. Again, they need to get more demand. I think, yes, the, the bulls will tell you the supply is, is, is plentiful because the demand is plentiful, too. That, to me, is going to be the worry going into this quarter, much more so whether this is a $20 million tweet, a new title, et cetera. Do they have the demand to reach uh, the consumers because maybe they have just enough too much supply? That's and what therefore, you think the stock should be worth what? I think it's at a good spot here, okay? If they, this is a 2019 story, not a f first quarter or a March story. If they get the kind of demand through the rest of the year that they expect to get, 
at the price points that you're now seeing, which are slightly lower than they were six months ago. And if you see the kind of demand and, 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 and enthusiasm for the crossover slash SUV that we've been talking about, then the stock's going to go places because this is still the best car in the marketplace. This is still the best range in the marketplace. This is still the best uh, delivery of a, of a production car that you can get, in my opinion. You can't get anything that matches it from a luxury car maker right now. Okay.